Hello, Internet. Dave here from The Cool Story Show, and I'm joined, of course, by Aaron Corbett. Hello. And we're going to do another Talk Who. This past week episodes was titled Listen, and of course, if you haven't watched the episode yet, there is spoilers following. So, Aaron, what did you generally think of the episode? Give me, give me your general breakdown about what you thought. Uh, pretty fucking awesome, Dave, it is was what good. it was. Um, yeah, it was really awesome. We had uh, Samuel Anderson returning with playing Danny Pink and Orson Pink, kind of a dual in the future. character thing in the future. Way in the future. Um, again, we're introduced the very first scene, basically, the Doctor is, is like meditating on top of his TARDIS floating in space, and he gets this crazy idea that we're never alone, and there's always someone with us, and you know, uh, we never can quite see them. And every time you hear that, you see something out of the corner of your eye, or you, you feel like there's somebody behind you, or you're being watched, or, you know, why when you're alone, do you, do you talk out loud? Because, you know, there's a part of you that knows you're not alone because there's actually somebody there with you. And I thought that was tip, typical, creepy as fuck Doctor Who idea. And, uh, hats off to Stephen Moffat for just like creating a really cool, like visceral, like gritty, like character driven episode. It was, it was, really really good it it was really incredible and last week we had robots of sherwood or robot of sherwood and that one i thought was really cool but this one just kind of blew me out of the water because we get to see a couple of different things first off um the date between clara and danny which i thought was was really funny they're kind of still playing on that awkward it was like the opposite too like in the first episode or the um, the the last time we saw them together we saw like danny pink crashing hard and but then it flashed back to him crashing and then this time we see clara at crashing hard flashing back and they she didn't just crash they both fucking crashed yeah um and i like that he's kind of starting to remind me of like rory type of character a little bit just sort of just a such a putz um but he's so likable as a putz and uh yeah i like i like seeing him and clara together it's a it's a nice match it is then we go to the doctor appearing at her home and uh you can tell that he's kind of been alone for a while he's kind of thinking about things like he's trying he's always trying to keep active and productive with something again i gotta say capaldi fucking killing it yeah. just killing it i'm starting to fall in love with this doctor but i feel like i've done that with every doctor where you go from a transition to one to the other and you're like i'm not gonna like this guy there's no way i can like this guy and then you end up actually doing it so again um the actors it was really just the three main characters in this too which i feel like is now just clara danny and the doctor there was no riffraff there was a couple little supporting um we got a young danny pink when he was a little kid uh really nothing else though we didn't even technically see or have an enemy technically um other than there might be something with us but we never got really to but that's the thing is there might be something that you can actually confirm if you well, watch dave, this episode if well, there's something there or well not. dave i have a question for you okay why do we talk out loud when we know we're alone conjecture because we're n- because we know we're not but in that scene isn't it possible that he could have just written that on the board himself it might be and forgotten about it it might be it's what, it's what he said. There's creatures in the world and the universe that are perfect at hunting, that have perfect defense. So why is it not plausible that there's some creature out there that's perfect at hiding? Okay. But then why would it reveal itself like it did in the bedroom? See, that, tried to this is the one like thing about bed. this episode that throws me off, is that we see the entire episode play out, and by the end of it, we know that it's just... It's it's the doctor's fears from when he was a kid, yep. following him through his life and coming back to him now. But what the hell was the thing under the blanket then? Exactly. It didn't really explain it. It didn't really say anything about it. We were given the answer of it's it's the doctor's fears at the end of the show. But what the fuck was the thing under the blanket? And it could have, when the station was opening up, when he unlocked the door... Did something come through or because, was it because just... he said it was the airlocks decompressing? It was gas in the pipes. It was all those little sounds that the ship was making and he unlocked the door and we never saw if something was standing outside there. If something came through. Exactly. And we don't know. You don't know if it's one way or another. I just, it just, that's driving me crazy. What was that thing under the bed sheet? Was that anything? Was that, it, 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 that had, that was something. It was something you kind of get a glimpse at it, but you don't really know what it is. Like maybe if it is another kid from the room or if it's an alien, we don't know. We really don't. Something, in, an interesting point, Dave. Um, um, moving a little bit along, I guess we don't really have to stay in order here because I don't feel like staying in order. My very favorite part of this whole episode, Clara talking to the doctor at the end of the episode and we, as a kid, 
would just that blew me away. Yeah. Like it blew me away that she told she gave him that whole speech about how fear makes us stronger and fear makes us fear makes us run faster and jump higher and fear can make us and so don't and one of my favorite things she said is she said don't don't let it make you jaded like fear can make us kind and that was really like was really cool because the you know even even capaldi's doctor none of the doctors have ever been mean or jaded they've always kind of helped people in their own each in their own weird ways they've all they've all done their best to always help people even capaldi even though Capaldi's a bit of a, you know, a black sheep of all the doctors, he still does what he can, and he helps people. He saves people. He might not like doing it, but he still does it. Yeah. And something interesting is part of her speech, she says, fear makes companions of us all. Um, that was also said by the very first doctor ever. I'm not talking rebooted series. I'm talking like a long time ago, like 50 years. The very first doctor said that in an episode called An Earthly Child. Hmm. So, you know, timey-wimey stuff, the first Doctor, in essence, quoted Clara 50 years ago. In our real time, he quoted Clara 50 years ago. Because she said that to him when he was a kid before the first Doctor even happened. Now, here's a question I want to rise to you. So, Clara links into the TARDIS through Psychic Link, and they end up going back... Through her own timeline, her personal timeline. And the Doctor shuts the the, uh, safety safety guards off, which is important. Yeah, it is. And they end up on Gallifrey... Where she meets young doctor. In the barn. In the barn. Where very later on in life we see the war doctor. Which was a cool cameo. Or flashback. Kind oh, of cameo. that drove me crazy when we got to see the war doctor. It was the same barn. And I know what your question is now, now Dave. How did they go back to Gallifrey? Because where is Gallifrey? It's stuck in a fucking pocket universe. Yeah. And they're not so st- supposed to be able to get back to there. Because that's the whole reason the fucking Time Lords reset the Doctors of Generations. Because they needed him to get them out of that pocket universe. But now they just go back to the pocket universe? That kind of, you know... I don't know. And is may- that a plot hole, Dave? Maybe it's, it's a bit of a plot hole, maybe. I, I don't think Stephen Moffat would let it be a plot hole. I think maybe that because the Doctor knows he can't go back to Gallifrey. Because maybe you can't have two of he, you. Now, granted, he was basically knocked out in the TARDIS, and he never left the TARDIS, and he never even looked at the view screen. Only Clara went out of the TARDIS. So and she made him promise him that he, she wouldn't, or he wouldn't. So that's a good point. Because yeah. I was thinking, you know, a bit of a plot hole, maybe. I mean, they did say, we shut the safeguards off, so we go, like, that's why they went to the end of time, because the TARDIS never goes there, although... That's not really true either because the TARDIS has been to the end of time before because that's where you first meet, first meet the Master. But was was that the end of time or was that the end of human time? According to the Doctor, it was the end of time. It was the end of the universe. There was nothing. There was nothing in the whole universe. It was the end. Then how could they go back to the, the end of time this point? Or maybe there's multiple ends of time. Maybe there's the end of time from a human standpoint and the actual end of time, which is this last... It's like Tenet said. Sun and people planet. don't understand time. You can't. Unfortunately, you can't. We, we can try to conceive what, like a, what they're going to, but... What does he say? A wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey timey, ball, ball? Yeah. That's what it is. It's not a straight line. It's not linear. Exactly. It's all just timey-wimey. Um, yeah. One other point I wanted to touch on is the uh, Danny Pink, Claire Oswald. I mean, I know we made fun of their relationship a bit from how it's coming to, to play, but we... Made... I actually like... It's, it's, it's like... They're kind of both huge losers, Kind of. By the way, on a side note, I didn't think Clara could keep getting more beautiful in every episode. In every episode, she just keeps getting more beautiful. Gorgeous. I just... Every episode. It just... Oh. But here's the thing, is we get hints with Orson Pink that he has family members that you, that he's heard or... That his great-grandparents... Because he says time traveling is in the family. And he says, my great-great-grandparents. And you don't really ever get an answer, so... You know, did Danny Pink and Clara end up together maybe eventually? And maybe, like, maybe Danny Pink... What I'm thinking might happen is Danny Pink eventually meets the Doctor. And I think that one rumor I heard pre-season is that the Doctor is going to have multiple companions this season. Well, the Doctor has always kind of had multiple companions. He's only ever had really two at once, I think. I could be wrong. Well, yeah, okay, he's had... Well, I think the most he's had at once was like Amy Rory River. Okay, that's that's first. So he's had he's had three kind of yeah. at once, even though they're not all companions technically. But I mean, like realistically, Rory traveled in the TARDIS with Amy and him, helped him out on all his adventures when Matt Smith was the Doctor. Realistically, more or less a companion. But I do believe that it's it's a pretty fair statement to say that I think Danny Pink is going to come on some adventures with Claire and the Doctor. Dave, can I ask you what what was your favorite scene of this episode? 
Favorite scene of this episode. Um, do you have one off the top favorite, of your head? Yeah, I do. Go ahead while I think of mine. Capaldi is such a massive troll when he steals that guy's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That was so great, huh? Just for no reason whatsoever. He just goes in and steals that guy's coffee. It was it was so awesome. That that was my favorite scene actually. Oh, it was incredible. And he just he's so like fucking Capaldi, so like cheeky and childish about everything he does. It was just yeah, it was killer. It was I love so how, killer. I love how we have the practical trickster side of Capaldi that does that, and then you've got the other one where he's making fun of like human brains when he mentions that to Clara that have you seen the human brain it's so small or something like that and he laughs and he thinks yeah. it's hilarious I, I kind of like how he's retained some of his goofiness not not really the Matt Smith goofiness but still to the fact where maybe he thinks he's he's better he's than kind of he is kind of goofy he just is not as nice yeah. but he's still goofy in a way and I still think he clear, he, uh, he cares about Clara I think he does too but I really think that I, th- I just don't think he understands how to care for her like he wants to protect her and keep her safe but he doesn't understand how to do it properly yeah. Maybe. So, wrapping up the Clara and um, Danny storyline, I'm, I'm going to predict that he comes with Clara and the Doctor, but I think that they're going to leave together as a couple. And that, and then the Doctor will end up with somebody new. Yeah, that, that's my prediction. Okay. For, um, for them. Can I, I'll, I'll point out something. Um, we've seen, we've seen the first episode. Yep. We had a big walking T-Rex. Yep. We saw Into the Dalek. We had... Daleks everywhere, fucking shit up. We had, you know, all kinds of cool special effects. We had, um, we had the robot, uh, uh, Sherwood. We had some wicked robots. We had some pretty cool stuff. Really wasn't anything of any sort of special effect in this episode for the most part, really. Like, nothing big, nothing extravagant, nothing crazy. One of the scariest, creepiest, weirdest, like, holy fuck scenes is when just Clara... And the kid are under the bed and somebody sits on the bed and they get out and the doctor's there reading his book. And there's really, that, that scene is just nothing. It's just those three in a room and there's something under the bed sheet. There's no special effects. There's no, there's nothing crazy. And I, that's what I really like about Moffat's writing is that he can just take the simple, the simple and make it terrifying. great yeah. or terrifying or, or interesting. Like you don't always need to up the, the the FX budget to make the show great because like this show didn't really do much for special effects. We had a couple shots of like the end of the universe, um, a few little things, but like realistically, it was all very simple, very easy, just simple set designs, which I liked. I thought it worked really well. Probably one of his scariest episodes since the first Weeping Angel. One. What do you think? Okay, here's the big question: What's scarier, blink or listen? Because a nice a nice counterpoint is that what does Tennant say about the Weeping Angels? He says, "Don't look away." Don't even blink. Never blink. Don't look away. And what does Capaldi say about whatever these might be, these silent companions, let's call them? He says, don't look at them. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your back turned. Don't turn around. But I think... It's a nice counterpoint how it's the complete opposite, but two very scary, you know... um, I think my argument to that one was the Doctor knows the Weeping Angels exist. He doesn't know what this thing lurking in the darkness is. Yeah. And the only way to defeat the looking or weeping angels is to look at them. Well, to keep your eyes on them. Or to keep your eyes on them, yeah. Right. So I think that's the big difference between, because I think he even says something about like, what, what does the, a creature that comes and visits the old and, and the young and in their night and their dreams do when there's nobody left and they don't want to be seen or something. When they're at the end of the world, he says, what did, you know? Yeah. I remember that. What did, did you have a favorite, uh, a, a favorite line? Maybe you can recall. I had a couple from the doctor. I actually had one from Clara is one of my favorite ones. Okay. What's yours? Um, yeah, she's, she's, um, correct me if I'm wrong. The young kid is named Oswald Pink. The young no, kid, Ru- no, Rupert Pink. Rupert Pink. I'm, yeah. My apologies as always. Um, he's afraid because the thing under his bed is leaving. Clara is trying to comfort him and she's telling the doctor to shut up. And then she puts all the soldiers around his bed and she holds up that one little one without a gun and says he's the boss. And he's like, well, whatever, you, you can't be the boss, he doesn't have a gun. And she says, a soldier so brave, he doesn't need a gun. And the ca- the camera's kind of on her and the doctor at the same time. I, I really like that. I think that's who she was thinking of in her mind, was a soldier so brave that he protects everyone but doesn't need a gun. Okay, here's one point that bugs me about that. So we see the soldier, Dan the soldier. Dan the soldier man. Yep. Get placed with uh, young Rupert Pink. Yes. It then goes to... Way the fuck in the future. Billions yeah. of years, and then Oswald Pink. I don't think it was Oswald. I'm pretty sure it was. 
Okay. Could be wrong, internet, if we're wrong, whatever. You'll tell us. But then it goes all the way back to the doctor as one of his guardians. Why doesn't he recognize that? How does he not see that? Maybe he just doesn't believe that that could have gone back into his time stream? I don't know. Maybe. That could be that could be very true. Um, um, as far as quotes go, none, nothing really sticks out at the top of me for for something that's awesome. Uh, one other point I wanted to bring up is, have you ever noticed that he's not really using the sonic screwdriver as much as Matt Smith Very did? little. Very little. Actually, at one point he's messing around with something and he points the sonic screwdriver at it and it doesn't work and he drops it and picks up a screwdriver and starts playing around with a real screwdriver. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like he wants to, cares about it as much or uses it that much and he, he uses it, not, it doesn't do that little pop up thing that Matt Smith always did. Matt Smith stared at it and whatever. Um, yeah, Capaldi doesn't seem nearly as interested in it. Maybe he doesn't need it as much as, you know, he's older, he seems more experienced. That's he true. Seems, I don't know, he just, I don't, maybe, maybe he doesn't, doesn't need it. to tell you things, yeah. And uh, first appearance of the uh, Psychic Paper. Oh, yes, this welcome season. back, Psychic Paper. We've missed you. We've loved you. Other than that, I think this episode was pretty good. Oh, it was great. I, I, I don't see... Um, I don't see myself liking another episode as much as I liked this one. That whole... I really liked the episode. I thought it was great. I actually thought Robot of Sherwood was better. Right until Clara's little speech at the end to the young doc... To the little boy, the kid doctor. That blew my mind. And it kind of wrapped up the whole... Not just the rebooted, but the whole of everything together. And that just... Um, puts into concrete that... The fact that Clara is the perfect companion she's always she has always been there for the doctor and in some ways she will always be there for the doctor because she's now been in every one of the she has now helped every single one of the 12 doctors and on top of that she went back and you know gave the young crying boy before he was the doctor some solace and gave him you know helped him find some strength when he was scared yeah which he has now taken with him all the way through to over 2,000 years and 12 regenerations he still remembers that that little thing that he heard while he was dreaming when he was a scared little kid and you know again clara just proving that she's the perfect companion and just being more and more likable and more and more uh just a better and better companion in every every episode that i see her okay so final closing question i'm gonna ask you the creatures and listen imagination or did they actually exist well, you see, they they kind of, um, they led us to believe by the end of the episode that it was the Doctor's fears of the dark and being alone that, um... But the Doctor also admits that he's found cases all throughout history where people have had the same dream. And that dream that he had was literally Clara grabbing his ankle when he was a kid and telling him to get back into bed. Yeah. So do you think that at the space station, was that them? Maybe was that the last kind of alien race inhabited or? And there's this thing I remember, it's from Tenant season. That's like five seasons ago where he's telling, I can't, oh, my memory's horrible. He's telling somebody about the fact that when the Gallifreyans, they have to look into this vortex and the ones who make it through um, become, uh, I, I, th I think they actually use the term like become a doctor or the doctor is a name i think maybe time lord I, oh sorry i could I, be wrong it's been a long time since I've whatever seen this i'm sorry internet it's yeah. been fucking it's been a long time um as we know the master goes mad and the doctor runs away afraid um which completely ties in to what clara told him when he was a kid about how fear makes us strong and we should we should embrace our fear because it makes us better and I just thought that was cool that they, they tied back literally into the very first episode 50 years ago. They tied back five years ago to Tenant, And it's just it's it's just wrapping everything up in just one nice little kind of package. I thought that was, that was pretty cool. Good point. Uh, as far as what I'm going to say, I'm going to say that I think it's kind of a mixture. I think that there is things that you you hear and fear that you think is real that isn't. But then I think that there also probably is things that is real that you should fear. Maybe there were creatures on that planet that were trying to get through the airlock. Or under the sheet. There was maybe something there was under, under the, the sheet. sheet. But maybe there was just another boy under the sheet. And that another, we don't know. Another cool thing I have to mention. 
no sign of Missy, no heaven, Again. and no but no promised land, no nothing in this one. At least in the last robot of Sherwood, we had that we had that little tidbit of the promised land on that um, on the alien ship. Yeah. Nothing in this one. It's just completely there's nothing at all. So that's that's uh, that's interesting. I didn't mind not seeing it. I really didn't care that it wasn't there, but I did notice. Yeah. That it seems like that that might that's going to probably be the main thread through the whole storyline. So, I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Well, this has been another talk. Who? I'm your host, David Meyer, joined by Aaron Corbett. You can find us on the tweets at a Corbett48 and Dave Meyer7. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the show, and we would bring you our next episode next week. Stay tuned. We'll be here talking. Who? We hope you come back. Bye-bye, everyone. Cool story show done.